It's a great pleasure for me to welcome Ed Liu, co-founder and CEO of the nonprofit organization B612 Foundation and executive director of Asteroid Institute. And he's also a three-time NASA astronaut and a veteran of two space shuttle missions and a former Google executive. And a very, very warm welcome to Ed. You're with us every year and thank you for taking the time to join us this year as well. Thanks for uh, having me on. So I thought we would dive directly into the Asteroid Institute that is an international center for scientific research and collaboration on the discovery and detection of asteroids. And I know that you're working on a really innovative and exciting project, the Atom Project, a cloud-based open source platform. Could you tell us briefly more about this project and what it entails? The Atom Project is our attempt to make calculations uh, analysis and understanding of asteroid data much easier much, to be able to done at much larger scale for many more asteroids and more transparent. So we, we want to be able to run these calculations much faster because there are going to be many, many more asteroids discovered here in the very near future as a number of large telescopes turn on. And we know that many of these asteroids will have a chance of hitting the Earth, and therefore we, it needs to be that the analysis for these types of situations is open and transparent so that everybody can look in and understand what's under the hood, how those calculations are done. And, and tell us sort of more in depth, how is this technology and this innovation really, you know, at the forefront when it comes to detecting asteroids and why is that so important? Well, what we've done isn't really innovative in the things that we've done, but it may be in the way we've applied it. So um, what we're doing is we're putting a lot of the, we're putting these, uh, the computational part, the, the, the algorithms and the computer programs that run it into the cloud in a way such that they can be replicated. And so many, many, many uh, calculations can be done at the same time by separate machines. That's not innovative at all. That's a standard thing that's done in cloud computing. You know, the back end of Google and Facebook and all those things is run that way. Mm -hmm. Most, however, of the scientific calculations done uh, for asteroids are not done that way. So we are doing that. And the other thing we're doing that, is, that isn't necessarily an innovative thing, but it's something that's new to the field, is that we are making our project open source, which means that we show our algorithms, we show how they're done, others can add to it, they can look into it, they can see the assumptions, and it's transparent. Hmm. And sort of keeping on the topic of innovation, because there's so much happening um, within space technology and technology that is enabling both small companies and large companies to get into the sector. What do you see as the most exciting or maybe the most sort of daunting developments and even possibilities when it comes to the future of space? Well, the most exciting thing to me going on in, in space is that uh, it is easier and easier for small groups of engineers or scientists to fly things in space. This is a bit like the PC revolution of the late 1980s, early 1990s, or the internet re revolution about 10 years later, because it became possible for many, many small organizations, small companies, small groups, uh, research scientists, whoever, even people working at home to innovate, design things and get them to, to market or, and bring them so that others can use them. And once enough of them can do that, it, the system feeds upon itself. And we saw that with an incredible growth in internet companies and capabilities, um, you know, 15, 20 years ago, that, that continues today, or with the, the PC revolution for those older folks like myself. And I'm just thinking, I mean, like I mentioned, you're a three-time NASA astronaut to sort of come more personally to you. And I've, I've interviewed many astronauts um, during the years and, and they always share this sentiment of, you know, seeing the world from above. And I'm thinking in, in the sort of uncertain times and a bit daunting times that we're living in right now, is there any messaging that you'd like to convey that, you know, both viewers, but also people on earth can really take to heart of seeing sort of the earth in another, um, in another way? So my, my message is very simple. Number one, the earth is very, very beautiful and I wish everyone could see that view. And number two is that absolutely incredible things can be done if people work together. I mean, I remember thinking from, from onboard uh, the space shuttle, 
looking down at the earth as we were traveling over it. You know, we're in a man-made machine um, traveling uh, around the entire earth every 90 minutes. Um, and this entire machine was built by human beings. And uh, I, I, the one thing that, you know, the most important thing I think I came away with from my years at NASA, my more than a decade at NASA, is that appreciation of what human beings can do when we work together. And that is such an important message, and thank you for sharing that. And I really do hope all our viewers take that to heart, that the sense of solidarity and unity and that we are so interconnected, whether it's on Earth or even in space. And Ed, thank you and the B6112 Foundation team for all the work that you're doing also in helping us save the planet from an asteroid impact. So thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much.